Hey gang, welcome to your second CSS grid tutorial and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the concept of columns. Alright, so in the last video we said that CSS grid gives us the ability to create these grids and place them on a web page. Then we can nest elements inside this grid and place the elements onto the grid like so. Now, this grid has two directions. It has rows going across and columns going down. This video is going to focus on the columns. So this example uses eight columns, but if you wanted to, you could have two columns, 10 columns, 20 columns. There's no limit as to how small or how large you want your grid to be in terms of how many columns you want in it. So the idea is that we create this grid and we set out the number of columns and the width of each column. Then we can place content onto those columns and say, hey, I want you to span three columns in width or four columns in width. Also, in this example, every column has the same width, but in your grid, you don't have to use the same width for every single column. You could have some columns that are three times the width of the other column. All right, and we're gonna see all this in a minute. So I've already created an index.html file, and inside we have this div with an ID of content. This is gonna serve as the actual grid, the grid wrapper, if you like, and then all the elements that we're placing onto the grid go inside it. So we have these nine divs right here, and each one of them has a number inside of it, so we can see which one they are on the web page. I've also added some very simple styles at the top up here. So the body tag sets a color of white for all the fonts, a font family of Nanito semi-bold, and it aligns all of the text to the center. The content, which is gonna act as the grid wrapper, has a max width of 960 and a margin of zero and auto, so it centers it on the page. Then we style the divs themselves. So each div is gonna have a background of this kind of light blue color and a padding of 30 pixels. However, each even child div is gonna have a background of this kind of charcoal gray color. So this looks something like this in the browser at the minute. Each one of these is a div, which takes up 100% in width as default because it's a block level element and each other div has a different color so we can identify them easily. All right, so now let's create a grid out of this thing right here. We wanna say that this is the grid and these are the elements we wanna place on the grid, right? So to make a grid, the first thing we need to do is take this wrapper, this content, and say we want it to display as grid. Dead simple, display grid. Now this is a grid. And if we save it and view it in a browser, nothing much is gonna change. All we're doing here is saying that this is gonna be a grid, but we still need to define our columns inside this grid, because at the minute, it doesn't really have any columns. It's just one element on top of another. But say for example, we want to give this grid four columns or three columns even, so that each row across has three elements in it, right? So the way we do this is by using a property called grid hyphen template hyphen columns, okay? Now we can define our different columns inside this property. Now I said we're gonna use three columns and I want each column to be roughly the same width. So I'm gonna say 33.3% for the first column, 33.3% for the second column, and 33.3% for the third column. So right here, we're saying we want three columns because we provided three numbers, and each column is gonna be the same width, 33.3%. They add up to just nearly 100%. So if I save this now, view this in a browser, we can see that voila, we've made this grid with three columns going across, so each element sits inside one of these columns and then it automatically creates a new row when it needs to because we have nine elements, but there's only three columns, right? So I did say that we could make each different column a different width. We don't always have to have the same width for each column. So let's try that. We'll say the first column is gonna be 30% in width, the second column 20% in width, and the third column is gonna be 50% in width. Save that. And now we can see it's still split up into three columns, but they all have different widths. And automatically, these elements have been placed into the positions one, two, three, four, five, six inside this grid, okay? So if we leave it like this, then by default, each element is gonna take up the column that it's assigned to, right? So the first one is assigned to 30%, the second one assigned to 20%, the third one to 50%, then we restart, we go on to a new row, the fourth one to 30, fifth to 20, sixth to 50, etc. All right, so that's using percentages. 
but typically what we do now with CSS Grid is use a different unit and that's called fractionals or fractions, right? So I'm going to get rid of this. In fact, I'll just comment it out so we can see it there later on. And underneath, I'm going to create the same property, grid hyphen template columns to say which columns we want in this grid. And this time I'm going to use fractions. So say again, we want three columns all the same width. Well, we'd say one fraction. So FR for fraction, one fraction and one fraction. So we're saying we want all of the columns to be the same fraction in width, the same fraction of the overall grid, if you like. So if I save this and view it in a browser, you can see each column has the same width. Awesome. But if we were to change this and say we want this middle column to have a different width, it's going to be two fractions. Then what this means is, OK, I want this to be twice as long as this column, right? This is two fractions of the overall width. This is one fraction of the overall width. So let's view this in a browser and we can see now this middle column is twice as big. It stretches twice as far. It's two fractionals. All right. So I want to show you one more thing. So let's comment this dude out again. And underneath, I'm going to do exactly the same property. I'm just keeping it up here so you guys can see as we go along. So grid hyphen template hyphen columns again. And this time I'm going to use a repeat function. And what repeat function allows us to do is say we want to repeat something X amount of times and also say what we want to repeat. So I want to repeat this three times because we want three columns. And then I'm going to say one FR. So that is the same as saying one FR, one FR, one FR. Let's just see if this works and we get exactly the same. Now, the reason this is cool is because say we want 10 columns or nine columns. I can say repeat this nine times one FR. And now we get a grid with nine columns. So it just makes writing out the columns much easier. So I'll be using this a little bit as we go through this series. So there we go. That is grid template columns. This property lets us define how many columns we want in our grid and how wide each column should be. Then automatically the elements get placed into each different column in order. So if the first column is 10% in width, then this will have a width of 10% or if it's two fractionals, it will have a width of two fractionals, etc, etc. Okay, so that's columns for you. Very basic to begin with. In the next video, we're going to talk about rows and how we can take this into the two dimensional realm. Whoopee!